children, welcome back. We want to thank you for sharing your artwork and videos in the past week. The colours were vibrant and we were very encouraged by the love you put into reflecting about joy and peace. We were especially thrilled by Louise and Jude for trying out the experiment. It was great fun, right? Well done to all of you. Do you remember what we learned last week about joy and peace? They are the fruit of the Spirit. We know that God wants to give us joy and peace that comes with knowing Jesus. This joy overflows and gives us the strength to overcome the difficulties in our lives. Now let's sing this song to Jesus, praising Him of His love that gives us joy. in school. How's it been for you? At first, I was feeling quite uncomfortable in the mask for 6 hours a day. It can get really hot sometimes and uncomfortable. I also had to remember to practice social distancing and wait in long queues just to wash my hands. <sighs> oh dear, I wonder what it feels like to have to wait for a long time in the queue just to wash your hands so that you can have your recess or snack break. Sometimes I feel frustrated and I get impatient because I'm hungry and I just want to eat my snack. If only there wasn't this virus thing, then life wouldn't be so inconvenient and troublesome. I understand. Hmm, 
Speaking of food, I want you to try this banana. Huh? But it's green, isn't it? Unripe. It's bitter and hot. No, thank you, Dad. I thought you will say that. Why don't you try this banana instead? Oh, it's ripe. Hmm, yummy. It's soft and sweet. It most definitely is. Do you know that it is only when we allow the banana to take its time to ripen that the green banana becomes yellow, soft, and sweet. So, what does this tell you, John? Hmm, that we need to be patient. Yes, patience is another fruit of the spirit. When you are impatient and demand for things right away, it's like eating the green banana. It doesn't taste good, or things just don't go the right way. However, we can try waiting and being a little patient, just like how we would wait for our banana to ripen before eating them. Then we will become more patient when we face these inconvenient situations and not feel so upset by them. Things will start to go the right way, just like how the banana become soft and sweet. Patience is to bear difficulties calmly too. When we are impatient, we will end up hurting others with our words and actions. Do you mean like the time where I was impatient and interrupted Tata Nicole when she was talking? I remember that made her really upset as she was telling us something important. That's right. God is also patient with us and with our mistakes. He forgives us each time we do wrong. Just think about when you were shown patience by others and it meant a lot to you. You appreciated it. And you felt loved, right? I guess that's why First Corinthians thirteen four says, "Love is patient, love is kind." Exactly. To love someone is to be patient and kind to them. It is not always easy. We need Jesus. Now let's sing this song to tell him how much we need him to help us be patient, just like him. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the
Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord Jesus, we need you so that we can not only be patient, but to be kind to others too. Now, to be kind is to show real concern and care for another or to expect what the other needs. That is another fruit of the Spirit, kindness. Let's look at some examples of what kindness looks like. Luke forgot to bring his pencil case to school. I have extra stationery in my pencil case. Should I lend them to him? I better not lend him my stationery or he might lose them again. I will lend him my stationery because he needs it to do his work. I haven't seen my grandma or grandpa for a while now because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Should I give them a call or take this time to watch TV? I will give them a call to see how they are doing and to bring them some cheer. I will give them a call later, maybe after I finish watching TV or I'll just call them next week. Hmm, what would you choose to do in those two scenarios? Let's see what John decided to do in the end. I will lend Luke my stationery so that he can do his work. Then, he won't be scolded by the teacher. In that way, I will show him what kindness is. I will be kind and give my grandparents a call to see how they are doing and bring a smile to their face. That's really kind of you, John. Sometimes we have to give up some things to show kindness to others, and that's okay. Do you want to hear a story of a saint who practiced both patience and kindness? St. Martin de Paz was born in Lima, Peru, but he was of a Spanish Panamanian descent. From a young age, he led a hard life. He was abandoned by his father and left to grow up in poverty with his mother and younger sister. He only finished two years of primary school, but picked up the skills of hair cutting and taking care of injured people. Martin was often made fun of for being mixed race. Even the monastery was reluctant to accept him to be a brother in their community. However, with lots of prayer and patience, at 15 years old, he was finally accepted into the community as a helper. Martin was tasked to do the most lowly of jobs, like sweeping, cleaning, laundry and working in the kitchen, but he never once complained. Eventually, he worked his way up to be a church officer, distributing money to the poor. He treated everyone with kindness and used his gift of barbering and healing to help others, regardless of colour, race or status. Many who were sick and poor received his love and help. It was only after nine years that Martin was finally accepted into the community as a brother. There's so much we can learn from St. Martin de Paz. He showed us by practicing patience and kindness, God can heal, comfort and help others through our actions. So remember, when we are impatient, we also become unkind with our words and actions. Luke 6.31 says, Do to others as you would have them do to you. Now everyone likes to be shown patience and kindness. 
So every time you wash your hands or take a shower, ask Jesus to wash away the unkindness and help you to spread kindness instead. We hope you have learned that when we walk in the Spirit, He will give us the strength to practice patience and kindness. This week, we have fun activities prepared for you. They can be found in the Padlet link in the description page below. As you do these activities, think about how you can show patience and kindness to the people around you and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Share your works with us so that we can all be encouraged. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Hi, welcome back. Now, let's listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us this week. By now, you are familiar with the most important items on the altar, the pattern and chalice which hold the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We know that the bread and wine they hold are only bread and wine until Father prays for the Holy Spirit to come down upon them. Have you ever wondered where his prayers come from? Does Father just make them up? Now the words he prays actually come from the book on the altar. It's called the Roman Missal. The Church composed this book of prayers for Mass and other sacraments like baptisms and weddings. You know, some of these prayers have been used for over a thousand years. Whenever we pray along with Father at Mass, we are praying not just with Him, but with the millions of Roman Catholics around the world who will hear these same prayers today in their own languages. This reminds us that we are all one Church, worshipping God together with the words He gave us. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the liturgical books. It's now time to prepare for Holy Mass. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about patience and kindness. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 5th July 2020. We offer up this Mass for the children who are back in school, that they will have the patience to bear the inconveniences of the new normal and for the protections of teachers, staff and children. Join us in singing the processional hymn, I sing the mighty power of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. It is good that you and I gather together with the rest of the Universal Church on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today in the Gospel passage, we will hear about Jesus revealing all the wonderful things about God to the ordinary people, the little ones like you, to your mummies and daddies and to all of us who have come to be with God this morning and to praise Him. But as you and I come, we know that this past week, we may not have lived with the love of God in our hearts. We may have not loved one another. We may have not loved the people in school or at work. And we may not even have loved God as God would want us to. So let us pause, you and I, and let us for a moment examine ourselves. Let us ask God to forgive us for our sins. And let us trust in the love that he has that will perfect us to enter these sacred mysteries this morning. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who in the basement of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery, from sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. The Lord says this, Everyone in Jerusalem celebrates and rejoices. Your king has won the victory, and he is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on a cloth of a donkey. I, the Lord, will take away all war chariots and horses from Israel and Jerusalem. Bowls that were made for battles will be destroyed. I will bring peace to nations, and your king will rule from sea to sea. His kingdom will reach from the Euphrates River across all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer ruled by your desires, but by God's Spirit who lives in you. People who don't have the Spirit of Christ in them don't belong to Him. 
God raised Jesus' life. God's Spirit now lives in you, and He will raise you to life by His Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, Jesus said, My Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I am glad that you hid all this from the wise and educated people and showed it to ordinary people. Yes, Father, that is what pleased you. My Father has given me everything. He is the only one who knows the Son. The only one who truly knows the Father is the Son. But the Son wants to tell others about the Father so that they can know Him too. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, friends, have you ever experienced that moment of finding a new meaning a new understanding when you read your favorite storybook or listen to your favorite song a second, a third time, or maybe more? When I was young, about the same age that you probably are, I liked singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. My grandmother and I would sing it every night before I went to bed. I liked that nursery song. It made me think about all the stars up in the night sky twinkling, twinkling, and looking down at me and everybody else. I thought, how about this twinkling stars looking down was shining on all of us and lighting up our lives. To me, those stars smiled. They twinkled. They comforted us. And I went to bed feeling so happy. But as I grew older and learned a lot more and became an adult, I began to understand that this simple lullaby, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, could have a different meaning altogether, a more adult meaning. The star could be someone who brightened up your life, like my dad and my mum. Or the stars that guide travellers when they travel in the night could be the people in my life who helped me to grow up, to learn more and to become the person I am like my godparents and my teachers and my friends. Yes, growing up and reading our favorite storybooks or hearing our favorite songs a second, a third time, or many more times can help you and me understand them in a very new way. We might even find ourselves challenged by this new way of understanding. This is how I feel about today's gospel passage. Growing up and listening to it on the Sundays that it was proclaimed made me happy, truly happy, because what I heard was Jesus saying how much God wants to show himself to ordinary people, people like you, the little ones at home. 
at home with your family, with mummy and daddy, in the ordinary work they do. And like many others, the poor, the sick, those who live an ordinary life, that was the good news I heard, that Jesus wants to show us how much God loves us and to show us that he loves every one of us. And Jesus reminded us of God's big love for you and me by sending him, Jesus, his son, to us, to love us, to care for us, and to save us. And that's why we hear that invitation from Jesus to come to him with all our heavy burdens each time in prayer, in faith, and in life. Burdens like feeling stress in studying at school or being bullied at school, or those burdens that mummy and daddy have of making a decent li living to put food on the table for you and making sure you have everything you need to grow up well. Whenever I heard that gospel reading when I was much younger, I would often say to myself, wow, isn't it so wonderful that God thinks I'm special and my friends are special and mummy and daddy are special and everyone is special to God because God just loves us, the ordinary people. This week, I was reading the same gospel to prepare for Mass, the same gospel reading I grew up reading, listening, and being happy. But I found myself being challenged in a different way, in an unexpected way, in a new way. What challenged me is what Jesus also said. Jesus said, I'm glad that you, Father, hid all this from the wise and educated people. And so I asked myself, who are the wise? Who are the educated people Jesus is talking about? Maybe it's those of us who have grown up, grown up and learned so much more and become clever. And as we have become clever, we have in our cleverness become important people. People perhaps in power and authority, people who command and control others at work, people who live lives with so much more than others who have so much less, people perhaps who know so much or know it all. Maybe these are the people the world puts on pedestal and applaud them and praise them for being successful, for being so smart, for having their lives all together and in control. Maybe people like me, a priest and a principal who others tell me I'm special and I'm important. But if I begin to think like that, and if all of us begin to think like that and act as if we were special and important, I think we bluff ourselves. We bluff ourselves that we know we are important and this self-importance makes us special, different from the ordinary people. We adults, we have a word for this sense of self-important. It's called ego. Ego, which simply means this, that we have a very large or exaggerated sense of our own value, our own sense of being important. This sense of self-importance is really all about me. Me, I, and myself. We want everything to happen the way we want it. And we want it now because we want it. And though some of us do this in life, we remain unhappy. I think we're unhappy because we don't make any room in our lives for God and God's love. So how can you and I change this way of living if we feel so important and we put God to the side? I think we can change by learning from the ordinary people, the little ones, the poor and the needy, the sick and the sinful. I say this because I think they, they really understood what it is to welcome God and to embrace his love and to make God's love part of their life. And one of the ways they do this is with patience, with that patience that they understood God was working in their lives slowly but surely, and showing them not just that he cares for them, but that his love is so, so big 
that he will always, always love them. And by patiently letting God work through their lives, then God slowly changes them. And as God changes them, what did they find? They found that the many gifts and talents that they had, which gives them a healthy sense of who they are and how to get on in the right, get on well in life and make it through life, that it is meant to be used for others and to help others. Because what they discover is that it is not the self-importance of who they are and what they can do that is the center of their lives, but that it is really God. And what God does in their life is to slowly transform them from within to become kind, as kind as God is to you and me. By being kind to one another, by caring and sharing, by forgiving and reconciling, by lifting one another up and helping us to get along our way. These are all the ways that Jesus showed us how God loves us and loves us so much. This is why for you and me to live as Christians, we must live a life of kindness to one another and for all. I wonder sometimes when others see us loving one another, I wonder if they will pause, look at us, smile, and then say, see, see how they love one another? They must surely be Christians by their love. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, do you and I study and work, play and pray with this kind of Christian love? I like to think that the really wise and the really educated are those who have found the secret of the ordinary people to practice the patience that says God is working in their life and the kindness that God has shown them that they share with other people. Because those are the ways the ordinary people, those are the ways they live with one another and with God. These are the ways that they are open to experiencing God in every moment of their life. These are the ways that they become curious about how God is working in their life and how they want to know more about God. And these are the ways that move them to always welcome God and more than that, to say thank you to God. Just like what you and I, boys and girls, mummies and daddies, and all of us are doing as we gather for Eucharist. We are saying thank you to God for this week that has been. For us who are adults, who have grown up and learned so much, I think it's good for us to remember that we can learn from the young ones too, the little ones, our children, because they have so much to teach us. Just think about them and what they do to us or for us on Christmas morning or on their birthdays. They come up to us, don't they? They hug us, whether it's mommy, daddy, godpa, or grandma, or grandfather. They wish us and they tell us they love us. And when we give them the presents, they shake it, they open it up, and when they look at it, they probably smile, they make some cheer, and they laugh. But it's what they do that matters after that. They run to us, they give us a bigger hug, and they say, thank you, mommy, thank you, daddy. Why? Because I think these little ones understand that they are happy when someone loves them and cares for them and shares with them all that is good. That's why they want to thank you, mummies and daddies, godpas and godmas, and everyone in the family on those special days, and even on ordinary days when we share our love with them. And that's why the little ones also want to thank God. It's something you and I should be reminded of and we should learn again and again, because as we grow older, we become more educated, we may sometimes think that we know it all and we are the center of our worlds. So today, let us, you and me, give up. Give up the need to feel that we are so self-important. Let us give up that need and let us give God room to love us and lead us on as we truly are. His little ones, His people, His beloved. Let us remove ourselves from the center of our lives so that God 
God alone can be the life center of all of life. I think when you and I can do this, we will understand in a new and very wise way what Jesus means when he says in today's gospel, take the yoke I give for you. This yoke that Jesus gives is not a burden, not the burden of rules and regulations of how to be a Christian. Rather, the yoke is a sign of how much Jesus wants to be in friendship with us because he wants to share his life with us, his work with us, and he invites us to be yoked to him, to partner him, to be together with him. Maybe we can understand that you and I will always know that we can go to Jesus. He will give us the rest, the happiness we need. And isn't this new way of reading, this different way of reading today's gospel, good news, good news for us to remember, to celebrate, and to believe in as we make the journey through the coming week. Amen. As God reminds us how faithful he is to us, let us show our faithfulness to God as we profess our faith with our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, with tender love, Jesus invites us to find comfort and rest in him. Trusting in him, we bring our needs before him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop William, all priests and clergy, that they be gentle, humble of heart, and welcoming to all, inspiring the faithful by their example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our upcoming general elections, that we can vote for leaders who work for the common good, respecting the dignity of every human life, defending and protecting the poor, the marginalized, and promoting racial harmony, religious freedom, peace, and unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of a simple faith and childlike trust in God, that we surrender our fears to God and give up the need to be in total control of our lives, confident that God will provide for us in every circumstance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing the church for resumption of masses, that they be guided by the Spirit to ensure a safe homecoming for all the faithful. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost their faith or who do not yet believe in God, that the Spirit will lead them to an encounter with the living God to help them be open to the one who loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers, we pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God most holy, keep us always near and dear to you so we can bring all our concerns to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this oblation, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Live up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Father, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So let us pray, those of us who cannot receive communion, let us pray for a spiritual communion so that you and the Lord may be together as one. So we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the price of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Society of St. Vincent de Paul in Singapore today it was started in 1961 by the late Dr. E. Ping Liang. My father was motivated by the major incidents during the Japanese occupation that led him to believe very strongly that his life belonged to God. Father Bethel read something on the St. Vincent de Paul Society that had started in France. He was quite interested because there were many poor in Singapore. And so he showed it to my father. My father felt that this was what God called him to do and he knew that Yi Ping Liang also would be very good together doing this. Those days, they went around begging, like, like for example, Ming Chiu is like, he's always tolong la, tolong la, you know? And that's like two parts of the work, la, find money, give money. The way of reaching out to the poor, I think, changes as the world in which we live changes. Sometimes the mom will tell you, oh, I just gave condensed milk and water to my baby to drink because I've got no money for milk powder. And you know that the baby cannot drink condensed milk with water. And what do you do next? In all our programs, I mean like the milk and diaper program, we actually visit the family, check on their health, understand their needs. 
we begin to have that personal contact. And so the work of accompaniment is very important in the life of the Vincentian. Every month, when I go to take the financial aid, it will say, have you eat? Go and eat. Or if you want, can take some home. The very first time when St. Vincent de Paul visited our house, we did not even have. Yeah, even the chair. Yeah. So the first chair was from them. Yeah. Their main importance that they actually showed us was our education. They said this like, education breaks poverty and we're sticking to that until today. Because they work with all races and all religion, I don't see any barriers. The love, the support and the care that they show is the same to everybody. Vincentians are called to serve and hope and we've been called to be a beacon for others and help them realise the own light that they have within themselves. By taking one hour out of your week just to do a home visit, it's very meaningful and you also get to brighten someone's day and that moment is priceless. When you go in love and serve the poor, it's not a one-way benefit. The poor will come to the realisation of the goodness of God. He come to our house. He asked me, you need anything? I think I tell him that, oh, we need washing machine. And he really buy a washing machine and send it to our house. Oh, I'm very, very grateful. I'm very grateful. <laughs> we don't only serve the poor. We serve Christ in the poor. Because we see in the suffering poor, the suffering Christ. And the suffering poor see in us as the hopeful Christ. So by sharing God's love with the poor, we are actually evangelizing to the poor and bearing witness to Him. All you have to say is, yes, let me try, and then let God do the rest. Dear friends in the Lord, peace and joy of the risen Christ. I'm making this appeal with a heavy heart of knowing that many of you are going through many challenges during this unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic outbreak that has launched our nation and the world into a crisis. Everyone is affected. Our Archdiocese too is weathering the storm. Our whole way of living our lives and our faith within this storm has posed painful challenges. So our true hope is to focus on our risen Lord and to trust in His merciful love. We need to unite and emerge even stronger from this storm. We need to trust that our merciful risen Lord will never fail to give us the special graces we all need for our families and for our archdiocese during these trying times. As your needs and my needs are different, and your blessings and my blessings from God are different, let us spend some moments to ponder on how the Holy Spirit may be stirring within your hearts to support the many needs of our archdiocese to which you and I are co-responsible. Actually, our Archdiocese has been facing these great challenges even before the COVID-19 crisis and the suspension of masses. The financial challenges are even greater now. So may I appeal to your generosity to support our Archdiocese however the Holy Spirit may move you to support. For this, May I suggest that it is good that you spend some moments pondering and listening to the Holy Spirit within your hearts on how God has blessed you and your family so abundantly. For freely we receive and freely we should give. Be assured that His Grace Archbishop William Go and I will continue to pray specially for you and your family and in the daily masses we say, 
Take care and God bless you. Going to school is not just a matter of acquiring knowledge. Going to school is to develop ourselves. To develop ourselves to be leaders for tomorrow. Leaders who place the people, the country, before their own needs. ACCS, they're supposed to help the schools to recover their Catholic ethos. Every school is unique. Every school should be able to live out their charism. But at the end of the day, all Catholic schools must share common values. Catholic teachers must learn to synergize and principles as well. Catholic parents must try to put their children in Catholic schools so that they will have a strong Catholic upbringing and ambience. So that together, we can strengthen the Catholic ethos in our Catholic schools. We recognise that we are not existing in isolation. I'm not a Gabrielite school, I'm not just a La Salle school, I'm not just an IG school, but we are here as a Catholic school. Living out our faith also means that we need to build a community and first and foremost, I think it's important for our Catholic community to be one which is united in terms of our ethos and our direction and our vision for the students in order to be better able to reach out to the communities in Singapore that really need it. Many gifts, one mission, to bring the gospel values of Jesus to each and every one of our students and to bring Christ to a needy world. Allow opportunities for every child in the school to have a personal encounter with Christ. For the Catholics, it's quite obvious. But for the non-Catholics, their personal encounter with Christ will be, have they met another person who really cares for them, who inspires them, who motivates them, who makes them feel that, that they are individual with rights and feelings. What is our place and role in the world, in Singapore, in our schools, and looking into the holistic well-being of an individual, of a human person that comes through our gates in the schools that we teach. And so that includes spiritual development, that includes understanding confidence, self-esteem, value of being a human being. It takes many years to grow a tree and along the way you have to care for it, you have to prune it so that it reaches its full potential and that's what we need to see our kids as. This is going to be a lifelong journey for them. Children are seen as God's gift and everyone is to be valued, to be loved, to be treasured. We must band together as one system of Catholic school sharing one mission to help our students to love, to dignify, to serve and to lead when they graduate from our schools. The Archdiocesan Commission for Catholic Schools seeks to strengthen the Catholic ethos and support the provision of religious education of local Catholic schools. Your support has helped fund ACCS to carry on serving the Catholic schools in Singapore.